Universitas Alma Ata, di Globe Inspiring University, merupakan salah satu universitas di kota pendidikan Yogyakarta. Kami lahir sebagai buah pikir para cendekiawan muslim dan ulama terhadap laju perkembangan zaman. Dan juga bagian dari refleksi tanggung jawab moral keagamaan untuk membuktikan bahwa Islam is always suitable to be a way of life anytime and anywhere. Bahwa Islam solihun fi kulli zaman wa makan. Sejak tahun 2006, kami terus berupaya maksimal mencetak sumber daya manusia yang profesional, berakhlak mulia, bervisi global, berpegang teguh pada nilai-nilai ajaran Islam, dan mengabdi untuk kepentingan umat. Saat ini, Universitas Alma Ata memiliki 4 fakultas dengan 16 program studi yang telah terakreditasi oleh Badan Akreditasi Nasional Perguruan Tinggi. Dan sejak tahun 2012 telah bersertifikat ISO 9001-2008 Yang terdiri dari Fakultas Ilmu Kesehatan Yaitu 5 program studi S1 dan 1 program studi D3 Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan Terdiri dari 4 program studi S1 Fakultas Ekonomi dan Bisnis terdiri dari empat program studi S1. Fakultas Ilmu Komputer yang terdiri dari dua program studi S1.
Baik, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, all the participants. Good morning, all the speaker. Alhamdulillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum The Honorable Rektor of Universitas Almata, Profesor Dr. Hamam Hadi MS, SCDS, PGK. The Honorable Ketua Yayasan Almata, Dr. Anda Hajah Ida Rufaida. The Honorable the Dean of Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Dr. Andi Wahyudi MPD. The Honorable all of the speaker and all of the participants on this webinar. This webinar is officially and proudly presented by Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Universitas Almata. Ladies and gentlemen, I am Ricky Perdana, moderator of this webinar. I'm very happy to see you and welcome all of you to this webinar. Our topic today is about the challenges and the opportunities in Education 4.0. Before we start our webinar, Uh, this is our schedule, our agenda for today. The first is opening, and the second is welcoming speech, and third is main event. With the first speaker, will explain about the COVID 19s current landscape and the impact on education. The second speaker, uh, we will discuss about, we we'll explain about the challenges to higher education in 21st century, and the last speaker will discuss about the challenges of educational system and the post-COVID area. And the third agenda is discuss and answering question. If you have any question, you can type on the room chat or you can raise your hand in the last section. So remember, if you have any question during the speaker, explain the material, please type on the room chat. And the last will closing the webinar. Okay, this is our schedule today. Before we start this webinar, let's pray together and for Muslim, let's say Basmalah, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. And then uh, let's we hear the welcoming speech from Rektor Universitas Almata to Professor Dr. Haji Hamam Hadi, MS, SJD, SPGK. Now, time is your place. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good morning. Alhamdulillah wa syukurillah salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa mawala amma ba'da. Honorable Dean of the Faculty of is of who has always Uh, I'm sorry, Prof. Yeah. The voice is not clear. Yeah. How is it now? Is it's it clear? It's now, Prof. Yes. Thanks, Prof. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Well, uh, we would like to thank Professor Zuhairi and also Professor Rahmat Wahab and other speakers who were pleased uh, to attend and share their knowledge uh, through this webinar uh, today. And again, thank you very much for 
uh, coming with us. Uh, Pak Suheri, I, I all actually I already heard Pak Su uh, from Pak Andy, and uh, today I would like to welcome you. Uh, you are uh, very, very welcome to be with us today, and uh, I really hope that uh, in the future we we, we can uh, develop further uh, collaboration between Alma Ata University and uh, North Carolina University. I would say that uh, actually uh, I've been there in, in the United States for quite a long time. Uh, yeah, I, when I was there in uh, 1993 to 1997. Uh, and until now, I always uh, come and back uh, uh, to the United States. Sorry. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, yes, I can hear you very clearly. I'm, yeah. I'm, okay. I'm, I'm listening. So okay. very nice to see you, Papa Hamam. It's um, yeah. next time you could stop by at uh, my house here at Princeton. Sure. And, uh, yeah. Terima kasih sekali, Pak Zuhairi. You know, uh, yeah. Uh, you know, I I very frequently uh, come, yeah, uh, and back to the United States. And the last visit to John Hopkins University, my alma mater, uh, was in the uh, two thousand um, two thousand nineteen, actually, yeah, two thousand nineteen. Before before uh, COVID nineteen pandemic. <clears throat> sure. I visit that. So. So one day, uh, I really want to stop by uh, your uh, house and university there in, in North Carolina. And I think that would be very uh, good time to, to see you there. Okay, you're so always welcome. Then, you're always yeah. welcome, Pak Hamam. Uh, yeah. Terima kasih yeah. sekali, Pak Zuhairi, yeah? dan juga Prof. Prof. Mat Wahab uh, dengan partisipasinya hari ini. Uh, Saya yakin uh, apa yang akan disampaikan oleh Prof. Suhairi dan juga Prof. Rahmat Wahab akan sangat bermakna bagi uh, semua peserta dan khususnya para uh, dosen dan also all student yeah, at the uh, University of Almata. <coughs> so again, thank you very much and you are very welcome and uh, I'm thank sure Today's seminar will be very meaningful for uh, everyone uh, who participate this seminar. And by saying Bismillahirrahmanirrahim, I would like to officially open uh, this seminar. Thank you very much and uh, enjoy uh, this seminar. Pak Zuhairi, terima kasih. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Professor Dr. Haji Muhammadi MSSCD SPGK for giving us the such welcoming speech and give the motivation to us to do the this webinar. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now let's we go to the main event for the first speaker today is Hamdulillah, Mr. Juhairi PhD has come in, has joined in this Zoom and who is the lecturer and researcher from University of North Carolina. Good night, Mr. Jahiri. Hello. Okay, hello, Mr. Jahiri. Maybe it's uh, in Germany, it's Carolina is night today, right? It's 10.17. Oh, now, here's, here's, here's my, my offer to all of you. What? You, could yeah. choose, you could choose either Indonesian or yeah. English. French or Sundanese? Which one you want to? Which <laughs> one you want to, me to give you the lecture? <laughs> yes, thanks, thanks, thanks for the question, uh, Mr. Juhairi. But if can we can discuss in in English, of course. Yes. No, no, I really it's it's, it's uh, on one hand I, I'm very fluent in in all of them, uh, <laughs> but also, but also I, I understand if if all of you would like to improve your English and how it's spoken in internationally, I would be more than happy. But if it's easier for me to speak Indonesian, I am ready. Just let me know. Whatever you like, I, I, I'll, I'll do that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank, thanks. Thanks, Mr. Jihari. It's, uh, it's happy for us, right? 
you can maybe we can uh, sometime you can combine with the Japanese maybe <laughs> Indonesian but the... Japanese a little bit I, I don't I don't know how how too much about it <laughs> Sundar Sundar game Mr. Jerry yes I know Sundanese okay okay maybe you can you can combine it and maybe the the main the main English we can use the English right Okay, uh, now allow me to welcome the speaker, Mr. Juhari PhD, to deliver his presentation. And we will discuss about, what about the COVID-19, current landscape and the impact on education. So to the Mr. Juhari PhD, now time is yours, please. Uh, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Um, Assalamualaikum. My profound gratitude to uh, Mr. Uh, Hamam, uh, Pak Hamam, and the whole um, Almata University. It is, it is an honor for me to be here. I know I know Pak Andy very well. He is my uh, friend in middle school and we're still in contact. And when he invited me to come here, it is my pleasure, of course. Um, and again, I, I, my slide is in English, so I will explain in English anyway, because uh, I, I'm really surprised that all of you speak English. Uh, at the same time, I understand English is an international language, and I speak English every day in my daily life, even here at home, so it's, it's not a problem. But anyway, uh, let's, let's get started. Um, let me share the slides. So first of all, I am not, an expert in education, but I know a little bit about epidemiology and, 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 and COVID. And my speech will uh, basically share with you the landscape, the current landscape of the COVID situation and on the treatment. There's so many misunderstandings in the society and in the social media and um, in many other sources. And, um, and then I will uh, uh, touch a little bit on the education, what the impact will be. Now, just to be clear, actually, uh, um, I am currently in Princeton, although I, I have a position in North Carolina. I'm a vice president at Sanofi. It's one of the biggest pharmaceutical company in the world. And I am also an adjunct professor at the University of North Carolina Chapel. So I have two, those main positions. I live in Princeton. North Carolina is in, in different state, but because of my position in, in Sanofi, I go to Paris every, every month before COVID. Now, just to be clear that what I will present today uh, uh, are data, but the opinion expressed in this occasion will be solely mine and not necessarily those of uh, Sanofi or UNC Chapel Hill. Now, before we get started, your question will be, when do we have this? Uh, uh, is it something new, what we have with, with COVID? Well, it is not. Obviously, it's not. You have here Spanish flu in 1918. This is maybe one of the deadliest, I should say, deadliest uh, pandemic. We have 50 million at the time death worldwide, uh, more than 67, uh, 675,000 in the US. Now, your question will be why it's called Spanish flu. Is it because the Spanish people uh, found, you know, found them? Not necessarily. This occurred in, uh, during the World War, First World War. And then at that time, all Europe, almost all European countries are at war, except Spain. So as you can imagine, when you are at war, you don't want to report any cases because people will think that you're weak, right? So, and Spanish, Spain at that time, they're not at war, they, they were neutral. So they, they were the one uh, reporting the cases. That is the reason why it's called Spanish flu, because it's reported by Spanish people, but it's not necessarily found by Spanish people. Now let's get, let's cut it to the chase. So if you ask me, this is today, this is today. Uh, in Princeton, it's still Wednesday, right? In, 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 uh, in Yogyakarta, of course, it's Thursday. But today, maybe two hours ago, this is what I checked the data from John Hopkins University, Pahama mentioned that. Uh, we have more than 148 million cases in the world, more than 3 million deaths. Now, it is important not only to see the number, but also the trend. If you could see, uh, in, uh, you could see here in, in the graph that in the, starting in, in January, there is a big decrease 
in cases, daily cases. But then, starting February, it is increasing again. And I would, I would think this may have uh, something to do with an increase uh, cases in India. You know that, and 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 then we have many uh, no strains, no no variants in the world as well. So the increase in the last uh, uh, month from March to April most likely is because of of uh, uh, the, the new variants, including the one in India. This is the United States, as you could see that uh, uh, the number here is in the bottom, uh, 32 million, more than 32 million, and with more than 570,000 deaths. And again, how do we read this? This is the epidemiology data. You could see that the, there was a tremendous, drastic decrease in January 2021. And then plateaued around February and March, there's a slight increase, but stabilized again. Why? Can, can you ask me why there's a big decrease in the US? It's vaccine. That's when they start vaccinating. Uh, in, in, in the US. And I'll tell you, right now in the US, there are 220 million people that have been vaccinated. Now, if you heard politically, uh, uh, Biden said, I want to vaccinate American people in my first 100 day in the office by 100 million. Now, he exceeded the expectation because after 100 years, he was able to vaccinate 220 million people today. All right, Indonesia, you could see over here that the total cases are 1.6 million with over 45,000 deaths. Uh, sorry, 1.6 thousand, 1.6 million cases and 45,000 deaths. Now, it is also important to see here the trend. There is a big decrease in, uh, from January, February this year. Perhaps this is Sinovac vaccine and then stabilized right now. But I will show you the data later on that we have to be very, very careful because this may not be the whole picture. And one of these, you may ask me a question. Okay, so US and Indonesia is almost the same. The trend may be the same, but not the magnitude. It's a very different thing. If you remember the previous slide, we have 132 million in Indonesia, we have only 1 million. This is, this is the comparison. You see, America, US, and Indonesia, the, the population is not that different. 331, Indonesia, 274. But can you see number of cases, 32 million in Indonesia, uh, sorry, in, in the US, 1.6 million in Indonesia. So from the epidemiology perspective, what it means, the rate, incidence rate is for every 1,000 people in the US, 93 had a case. But in Indonesia, out of 1,000 people, only six. You, what you can say here is the incident rates in the US is 15 times as high as it is in Indonesia. Now, assume that the incidence in the US is similar in Indonesia. In other words, if you apply the incidence of incident rate in the US to Indonesia, the number of cases in Indonesia would have been 26 million. So what does it mean? First of all, I think we have to be thankful to Allah that, okay, we're not that bad, right? Because if we have American incidence rate, we will have 26 million. But thankfully, our incidence rate is maybe lower. It's lower than that. That's one thing. The second thing as well is we need to be very, very careful because there is something here. It is possible that there are many undetected cases in the society. In other words, there are many people walking around with COVID, but we just don't know them. Maybe our detection is not as good, right? So those two things we need to keep in mind. Now let's go to vaccine, because I have only, I don't know, 20 or 30 minutes. I don't want to talk too much about the technical details. But you heard many, many things about vaccine. But here's the principle. For you to develop a drug or vaccine, you will need at least 10 years at least 10 years, there are at least five phases to deal with that. Preclinical, that's in the animal or in the lab oftentimes, to understand how the drugs work in theory, right? In theory, so vaccine Nusantara is preclinical in theory. But POM said, no, you cannot go 
to the next level because you're not safe, right? So we have to be very careful. Phase one, so once you pass that uh, preclinical stage, you will go into phase one and the focus of phase one is safety. You need to make sure, before you do anything with your vaccine and treatment, first is safety. You need to make sure it's safe. Then phase two, if it is safe, you see how effective it is. Now, phase three, this is where you want to know whether or not one vaccine is better than the other. Phase four is very important. When the vaccine goes into the society, then you will see what happens. So again, I'm not going to go too much into the detail, but keep in mind to deal with this, to develop this, you need usually 10 years, right? But how could we do it, Pfizer develop in one year? I'll tell you the story later on in the following slide. So this is the summary of what vaccines that are currently available in the world so number one is mRNA. This is based uh, 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 vaccine for Moderna, Pfizer, Sanofi, that's my company, also CureVac. So how does it work? Essentially like this, you know the theory of DNA and RNA. So this is the mRNA of the coronavirus protein. So you pick a section of the MR mRNA and you make it outside. So this is the synthetic uh, uh, version of mRNA of the virus and you inject it. So you basically try to trick the immune system of the body as if you have a virus, although you're not, right? So, so that's Pfizer and Moderna. And then adenovirus is a different thing. Uh, uh, mRNA, you use uh, messenger RNA, Adenovirus is usually using a different type of virus, not, not COVID, different type of virus, but also produce spike protein, pro protein S. And this is Oxford and J&J. &J. And then this is the more, maybe most traditional type of vaccine. Traditional means this is the regular type of vaccine is Sinovac. When you have a vaccine, coronavirus vaccine, coronavirus virus particle that has been inactivated, that has been killed. And you put in the in the body and trick the body to produce Im immune system. Now recombinant is a different thing. This is the combination of different DNA from different sequence. And then this combination, that's why it's recombinant. So the combination put back in the body to produce the immune system. This is Sanofi. One. So as, as I told you before, I work for uh, Sanofi. So we are currently dealing with number one, which is mRNA and recombinant, which is also another type of vaccine. Okay, this is the summary of the type of vaccine that are currently available in the world. You see the efficacy. Now, this is, this is a, a, a not an easy concept of efficacy, but because we don't have time, so maybe next time I'll explain to you more what it means. But what it means by 95% efficacy for Pfizer, it means it does not mean that if you have vaccine that you will be 100% bulletproof. It's not like that. You may get vaccine, but you may still get the, the event. The, now, the difference is with vaccine, you decrease uh, uh, the possibility of getting the virus tremendously. So basically, 95% means is it decreased your chance by 95%. Okay, so, and then Moderna is 94, AstraZeneca and Oxford 62%, and what is 90%? Again, this is a little bit complex, but it means if you measure the efficacy using a more severe syndrome, then you will have 90% efficacy. But non-severe syndrome, more mild one is 62, and so on and so forth. You see, we have J&J &J and Sinovac. This is the difference between Sinovac and other vaccines. Sinovac data has never ever been published anywhere that I know of. Now, every, everybody else is published in, in, in international journals that I read regularly, but not Sinovac. So I know the data from Reuters, from newspaper. Uh, what, what we know is that 65% is in Indonesia, 92% is in Turkey, 50%, 0.3 is in Brazil. Now, the challenge here is about the storage. You know, you may have heard that Pfizer and Moderna, they need deep, deep freezer. Because to store it, to make it stable, you will have to have 
minus 70 degrees Celsius. The question for me, uh, for me to Indonesia is, if you want to bring Pfizer and, and Moderna, do you have that type of uh, framework to deliver the vaccine with that type of requirement? So we have, we have to be careful with that. Now, AZ, J&J, Sinovac, on the other hand, the three of them could use this regular uh, uh, fridge refrigerator uh, for you to store it. So that, that one is good. Now, in terms of the uh, distribution, most of the countries right now are using Pfizer, Moderna, uh, Oxford, and J&J, and, &J, and, and Sinovac is used only in those three countries. Everybody has two dosage except J&J. &J. Now, let me tell you something that is very important. Oftentimes, you see on the newspaper saying, oh, somebody take vaccine and then die. Somebody take vaccine and has this adverse effect. Yeah. I, I want to warn you that you have to be very, very careful when you, when you see that because you will have to dig deeper, right? Again, we, I, we don't have time to discuss how to deal with that, how to dig deeper. But the bottom line is, if you ask me which vaccine you want to use, you will have to see the scientific proof, right? You have to see the benefit-risk balance, the, the, uh, what, what is the efficacy, what is the side effect? That you have to do. Now, here's the problem in Indonesia. We cannot see the scientific proof of Sinovac, right? But it has been approved by POM. So take it. We believe POM. I, I think they have uh, uh, good experts. They, they know what they're doing. So, you know, if we don't see a scientific proof, then follow the government. That's my suggestion. Now, but we also have to understand practical considerations, right? As I said before, can you distribute vaccine Pfizer Mark Moderna if you don't have it, right? Do you have people who could deliver this? Price, it's important too. Now in the US, it's free. So I have, I have uh, insurance, uh, the insurance pay, but at the same time, the government could also pay. Right, so, so my, my suggestion to all of you is take whatever is available in front of you, take it. You know, if, if there's no other option, you know, take what you have. This is the prediction or the projection in the future. This is the world. You could see in the middle, this is the likely scenario. Okay, if you see my cursor over here, in the middle, the brown, this is the likely scenario, given the current situation, vaccine, mask, and everything. Now, if everybody in the world use mask, this will be the model. So it will decrease tremendously. And this is the worst case scenario. So it could be still increasing, right? Now, if you ask me who, who developed this model, this model is developed by the University of Washington, Seattle. So there's an institution called Institute of Health Metric Evaluation. And this is the model. And let's see the US. Uh, US is better. So it, the current scenario, it will be decreasing. If you use mass, it's decreasing even more. Even the worst case scenario, there will be an increase, but still decreasing. And why it is the situation like this? Because of the vaccination, because of the massive vaccination in the US. As I said before, 220 million is vaccinated. And now everybody is eligible. Everybody could take it. Indonesia. This is something that is worrying to me. You see, the scenario, the current scenario is there will be an increase maybe in June, June or July, increasing. If you wear a mask, there's an increase, but not as bad. This is the worst case scenario. Now, what is the difference between this? slide and previous one. If you remember the previous one, let me go quickly. This is Indonesia. This one is detected. This one is detected. This one is detected and undetected. So my concern is there may be undetected cases that will explode like India. Right? So I think we need to be very, very careful. Now, let me discuss a little bit the impact of education. Now, let me tell you the situation in the US right now. School system will depend on the state guidance. So state, the Garabagian will make their own decision, all of them. Then they may be different. Uh, the current option, for example, in, in, in uh, New Jersey and Princeton is that my daughter, she could choose between going to school or staying home. So that's why I said over here, you could have full-time in-person, part-time in-person, but at the same time, you cannot 
typically go to school every day. Why? Because there's a limited capacity of school. You need to have still maintain the distance and so on and so forth. And every school in, in the US has the certification. If you want to get the uh, uh, children uh, in person class, you will have to have certification for that. And we have strict rules over here. You have to mask all the time, uh, smaller uh, uh, class size. And in the US, we have usually meal like a breakfast, lunch, there is no more meal. Even if you go to bathroom, you have to have a, 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 an appointment. And typically what, what we found here in the US is the problem in school is not so much during school session itself, but more on, you know, when, when you're waiting to be picked up or college students over here who go to bars, when, when they're at school, they're okay, but then they go to bars and they, you know, they, they open their mask. So that's, that's more of the problem. Now, here's my suggestion in terms of school operation, university operation principles. Uh, we have to follow the scientific data and the trends. So in Jakarta, you will have to see what is the trends of the cases this day. If it is decreasing, if it is decreasing, I think it's okay to open, but slowly. So to have a combination between in-person or remote classes but you have to do it very, very carefully and you have to see the trends. Of course, typically there is a confusion among parents, students, everybody, what should we do? So we will have to be, to make sure that before you make a decision, you will have to discuss, engage stakeholders, government, uh, of course, school, uh, um, healthcare professionals and then parents and students. So make sure we discuss everything and then make sure the communication is clear and make sure we discuss the alternative and make sure we know the strategy. Whatever decision we take, make sure that it is clear and have been discussed with everybody. And, and if the school decide to, to start to, to maybe a mixture between in-person and or, or uh, remote, you know, make sure physical distancing, uh, make sure engineering control, in other words, maybe you will have to have barrier you know, from one person to the other, but if it's too expensive, maybe it's better for uh, um, uh, physical distancing. What I mean by engineering control is if you go to the restaurant or anywhere, you will see the plastic barrier between you and the cashier. Or others so that's what it means administrative control so government policy is very important that's why i said before that the regulation about school in the us is mainly based on state uh, regulation um, and of course uh, mask uh, is, is is key now if we my suggestion as well if we decide to start start slow so not like okay we open and everybody get in so start slow maybe take turn two days uh, in person three days remote and so on and so forth and whatever we do you know in, in opening school and what the impact is we will have to be able to adapt because uh, uh, things may change so again i'm hoping that it will not get worse in the future but uh, uh, you never know so that is my brief discussion on on the current landscape and COVID and what the impact you see that I, I don't discuss in terms of uh, uh, you know how to execute the educational educational system in the current situation i'm not an expert and i'm sure other speakers will be able to help you but i will close my uh, my presentation with uh, churchill uh, don't ever ever let the good crisis go to waste which means more or less jangan pernah siasakan uh, crisis ini sebagai satu kesempatan. As you can see, one of the beauty of human is that they're very smart. I told you that we need 10 to 15 years to develop vaccine. But you know what happened? In one year, Pfizer is able to produce a vaccine. In one year, Moderna is able to use a vaccine. In around one and a half years, maybe, AstraZeneca and then J&J. So, that is one of the this is a challenge but this is also an opportunity for us to be creative and and to do something um, and then as, as as for me this is the book that i wrote during 
the pandemic. Uh, uh, it's not so much about uh, uh, science, although I wrote inside real world data, which is very important uh, in the future of public health benefit evaluation I mentioned to you before. Uh, but this is more on, on also life story and hopes and resilience and how uh, I want to share a story about you know, uh, uh, a child from a small village in, in Indonesia and, and go to the US and, and have a career in the world. So I'm hoping if all of you are interested in this, uh, uh, this will inspire you, especially I'm talking to the students, uh, inspire you to, to be resilient and to, to do your best and you will be able to reach all of your dreams. So with that, uh, uh, Mas Riki, I will end my, uh, uh, my speech. And if you have any questions, I don't know if you have time, but I'll be more than happy. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. And I'll be happy to answer any questions. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Okay. Thank you very much, Mr. Jerry Pesci, for giving us such informative and interesting presentation. It's very give many benefit for us to open our mind that uh, so many uh, things that we have to learn, especially in the COVID-19, about the vaccine maybe, to create the, the, our step to increase uh, the principal to the school and et cetera. Okay, now uh, I will remember to the participant, if you have any question, please type on the chat room and we will discuss in the last section, okay? Now, let's we go to the second speaker today. Uh, we will, we'll, uh, the second speaker is Professor Dr. Rahmat Wahab, MPDMA. He is the lecturer and researcher from Universitas Negeri Yogyakarta. Now, allow me to welcome the speaker, Professor Dr. Rahmat Wahab, MPDMA, to deliver his presentation about the challenges to higher education and 21st century skill. Professor Dr. Rahman Wahab, MPDMA. Now, time is your please. Hello, Prof. Prof. Rahmat. Good morning, Prof. Hello, Prof. Rahmat. I think you, your voice is not, not clear in here, Professor Dr. Rahmat. Any trouble, Prof? Mungkin masih di mute Pak Rahmat, okay. di unmute Prof. dulu. Rahmat mungkin dalam kondisi mute. Check, Professor, please check it. Sebetulnya host bisa bisa unmute di ini kalau kalau hostnya di di bisa unmute uh, Professor uh, Rahmat. Yeah, uh, the reporter has chance the Professor Rahmat to be host. Mungkin maybe it can unmute. Now, okay, uh, I'm so I'm so sorry because I think uh, Prof Rahmat have any trouble but the technical problem so now we can continue to next speaker okay operator can I give any information about this
Okay, okay Professor Dr. Ahmad. Can you hear me yeah, now? Yeah. It's clear? No. I, I have two. I have two tools yeah? for uh, laptop. It doesn't work anymore. Can Can you help me to unmute, please? Okay, okay. okay. We are sorry, Prof. Uh, it's clear, Prof. No, not yet. Not yet. Not yet. Yeah, okay, okay. sorry. A brother team can we solve the problems? Okay, maybe we, we the operator need a time to solve these problems. Excuse me, Mister Ziggy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I have two tools. One by HP, HP handphone, you know. Yes. I can unmute, but when I try to oh, open my yeah, laptop, okay. yes, 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 thank you. Can you help me? Okay, prop. I will. Uh, team operator, the maybe the palm of the prop will help unmute, and the prop will help. Okay. Okay, it's clear, Rob? Yeah, yes. Yeah. Good. Okay, Good thanks. Job. Thank you very much. The uh, operator team has solved the problem. And now yep. we will call again Professor Dr. Rahmat to deliver this presentation about the challenges to higher education in 21st century. Professor Rahmat, now time is yours, please. Good, thank you. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Can you help me, please, for sharing? Okay, bro. Yeah. Please. Yeah. Yep. Okay, Mr. Rector, Professor Hamam Hadi, Mr. Juhani. And also, Mr. Salim, I, I am not sure about uh, the name. <clears throat> the first of all, I thank very much for uh, this time to share about challenges to higher education in the 21st century. <clears throat> oh, no. Next, please. Okay, our watch in the post of threat era faces uncertainty in the future. We have a responsibility to direct it towards sustainability. You know that sustainable is very important for us, especially in, in the post threat uh, era. It's needed a new way to improve our environment. Also achieve justice, social quality and economic stability especially in the pandemic era. You know that uh, all countries uh, have a problem with economic. To realize this strategy, we need a, a new form of education in the 21st century because of the different problems. So that's why we have to create a new strategy, how to deal with uh, this problem. But uh, before of that, uh, you know that uh, we, we we realize that there are many challenges that higher education faces. Higher education is a very responsible how to uh, build uh, human resources, how to product human resources with a good uh, quality. Next, please. Before talking in detail, we know that uh, our uh, current society looks like what we can uh, read like this. We live in a world in crisis, change and unstable. You know that now because of the big problem, we, we are in the uh, many, many crises, also many, many change and also the condition is unstable. So the internal crisis in the welfare state, the social crisis, the environmental crisis, and sustainable, and unsustainable practices, the crisis of state, 
The third was by globalization and the crisis of democracy. Even though we, we, we are happy to have a new uh, way how to make uh, people can participate in the politics, like uh, democracy in Indonesia, but uh, now actually some, uh, some uh, countries, some states uh, have a uh, problem with the crisis of democracy, even though in Indonesia, major challenge, the major challenge facing a knowledge society is a generation of a collective intelligence. You know, this, uh, the problem is very complicated, not uh, very simple. So that's why it is impossible to deal with the problems with uh, individual intelligence. We can, we have to share with others to make a collective intelligence. So that's why interdisciplinary, multidisciplinary is very important for us to deal with our problem. Life in today's society is a novice culture and hardest culture. You know, this, even though we have uh, other problems, but especially now we, we have a novice culture, a hard culture, so it is not good for, for us. So that's why when people face the worst impact of Corona-19, we said our social problem, actually, all people in the world face the worst impact of a corona, including Indonesia. Yep. Because of uh, very complex uh, problems, actually, we need uh, a quite different uh, way, like uh, we need uh, a new education, a uh, new of, uh, platform of education. Uh, how to make education focus on creativity, also emphasize lifelong learning, education for sustainable education, My education sustainable development, I mean, sorry. Education must lead to empowerment. So that's why it is not make uh, uh, students or graduate become uh, people who has only much uh, knowledge but also they have to uh, empower themselves how to mix uh, their uh, uh, independent in their life the next you know that's uh, we can uh, there is uh, good information about education reform to face our 21st century uh, problem in, in the world. USA proposed uh, three, uh, four points are uh, very, uh, very important for us to be considered. Like academic achievement, every kids should be having a good uh, academic achievement. Next, improvement in school climate. Every school should be uh, create, should be improve the school climate, how to make a friendly school, uh, enjoyable school, and also a conducive school. And also increase school safety. Now there, is, uh, there are many practices of bullying. So that's why we have to protect our children uh, uh, for their safety. And this is a very important, the development of morally educated citizens. We can know right now in, in USA how, how people start uh, having a new awareness about religions. Even though last time, uh, most of people ignore about religions, but in the recent time, they try to start respect each other about uh, their position related to their religions. A religion start uh, becoming a uh, very important uh, aspect in, in uh, American uh, country. Yep. Uh, you know, that's uh, actually we have uh, information about uh, 21st century competence. We can say the three 21st century skills. Now I try to uh, modify, not skills, but competence. Also not a third uh, 21st century skill, but uh, not, not four, but uh, not three 21st century competence uh, skills, but the four 21st century 
uh, competencies. I give uh, one extra uh, competency. Why? Because uh, uh, three twenty-first century skills doesn't talk about uh, moral. You know that Indonesia is quite concerned about moral, like what uh, can we can uh, have from a Pancasila. All people here should be having a religion. So that's why uh, talking about 21st century skill, we have to consider about uh, the skills. Like what I uh, try to put, uh, let, let me, no, no, uh, back, back again, back again. Learning competency, learning skill, literacy skill, life uh, skill, and I modified become learning competency, literacy competencies, life competencies, plus moral competency. You can check at three uh, 21st century skills. We couldn't find about uh, number four. So I put a number four because we need this uh, competency in Indonesia is very important. Yes. This one, uh, very often we talk about uh, 4C, you know, because 4C just under the learning uh, scale, learning competencies. Next, talking about 21st scale, just only 4C. Even, even we have other uh, competencies like literacy scale. We have a three uh, scale three competency about literacy competency information media psychology literacy and then number three information literacy uh, no 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 next life competency flexibility leadership initiative productivity social competence that's enough so that's why i modify and i add one uh, competence that's a moral competency that's very important for us all skills are not related to the moral so that's why i put one uh, competency please moral competency this is my creation yeah this is my creation responsibility trustfulness honesty integrity it's very important for our students for our kids for our graduate next Now we, we can talk about uh, Industrial Revolution uh, 4.0. Today, of the basis of a cyber a basic production system, merging of a real and virtual works. Last time we also talked about a real life, but now we are quite often talk, uh, talking about a virtual works. Like uh, right now, we can create one seminar or one meeting, academic meeting, to virtual works. Why the industrial revolution of 4.0? It's due to the fact that velocity and impact of a current breakthrough is like ever before. The innovation and advance are omnipresent, led by strong emergence of field like uh, this uh, new thing, artificial intelligence, robotic, internet of things, IoT, autonomous vehicle, a biotechnology, nanotracture, and so on. The impact of such breakthrough is so rapid, the Revolution Industry 4.0 is evolving at expons exponential pace and disrupting almost every industry. This is uh, very important for us. Why Revolution Industry come up? Okay, next. Main characters of industrial 4.0, vertical networking of smart production system, horizontal integration, five new generation of global value chain network through engineering across the entire value chain, acceleration through exponential technology. That is, uh, the, we, we, we have uh, exponential technology then like AI, robotic, what we can find in, in the uh, industry, uh, you know, that's uh, two 
or finish or to to produce uh, to produce one one uh, car for example we don't need uh, people more people like what i can check in in japan uh, only three people can uh, help for uh, very difficult things uh, the rest 31 step can be handled by a robot that's a very efficient for uh, producing uh, uh, one one uh, one car for example next What opportunities we have by uh, our IR 4.0 increasing in global income level, you know? Now we can, uh, we can observe many friends, many colleagues, college can have money from other uh, area or other, other places, not only from Indonesia itself. Enhanced quality of life with higher technology reduction in transportation and communication costs. Yeah, you know that uh, we spend for uh, transportation and communication uh, uh, activities right now is very, very, uh, very cheap uh, compared to uh, one uh, decade or two decades ago. Yeah, uh, creation of new product and market and so on. Yep. What challenge industrial revolution? Security issues of data and maintaining privacy. That's very important. Like uh, uh, counseling activities, we should uh, protect uh, privacy and secret uh, belongs to uh, patient, uh, clients, or counseling. Now, uh, even though uh, we can have uh, enough time to face with our client we have to create with uh, e-counseling the the most important thing how to protect the secret or the privacy belongs to a client it's very important risk of greater inequality in neighbor market you know now there is quite a transitional time for a labor uh, market and uh, creation of higher order human jobs is always a concern when automated technology take over day to day jobs. Uh, this is uh, very important. So that's why now uh, we need uh, many uh, unemployment uh, uh, come to our uh, regions and because uh, they, they have no job in, in industries because of a pandemic. Besides that, there are uh, new jobs just needs only a limited person. So that's uh, very important for us to understand about the opportunity for new job, especially for new graduates uh, uh, from university. That next. Also, it could. Yep. It's good to do even higher in quality as a main technology take over labor intensive job. Okay, next. This is very important for, for all of us, not related to education, but uh, the global challenge for 21st century yeah, mindfulness, yeah, singularity. Terrorism, sustainability, uh, post-truth uh, politics. Uh, we we don't care about uh, uh, truth. Yeah, sometimes um, because we we have another choice, so that's why we don't uh, believe about uh, a certain truth. Knowledge is of twenty-first century and character. Yep. How about the challenge of higher education? So, so yeah. 
uh, level, uh, international level. The first challenge is the rule of supranational, supranational organizations such as UNESCO in advancing the prospect of trend and improvement as well as in promoting networking and training programs among institutions. Now we have uh, some universities open collaboration with other universities, not only in, in country, but also out of countries. Uh, they, they work together, they share the experiences, uh, and not only uh, in one aspect, but also many aspects they can create. The second challenge is to encourage international cooperation with institutions in order to share knowledge across border, in this collaboration, in which furthermore, essential elements for the construction of our planetary. So that's why now uh, there is no barrier among countries, among universities in one country and, and other countries. They can open uh, good communication, good collaborations, and also productive uh, collaboration among students and also among uh, faculty members. Yep. Now, uh, for national and institutional level, just in university institution and at the level of internal organization, improve uh, the management resources. Right now, uh, many uh, universities can modify, can adjust the, the structure of uh, organization, and also they can create a new uh, position for new work, for example, just in knowledge creation by using interdisciplinary and transdisciplinary approaches like what uh, right now it is quite uh, quite open yeah? in one university there are uh, collaboration between one faculty and other faculties one uh, uh, study program with other study program on one discipline and other discipline maybe two discipline uh, two institution maybe more than two uh, depend on the problems, the, the level of complex of the problems. Change in the educational model, new teaching, learning approaches that enable a different of critical and creative thinking should be integrated. Now we have to uh, habituate uh, about the uh, way how to think, not only uh, to uh, remember but also how uh, improve the problem uh, solving scale. Uh, like uh, right now, it's quite uh, often we can find some student can uh, show us about their research activities. About three uh, years, uh, 30 years ago, I think it's quite rare. We can find student can do research at the student level. But now, as many, many students can do uh, uh, like that. Uh, what, what they can create uh, some innovation uh, uh, made by students. And also things for social responsibility and knowledge uh, transfer. You know that uh, knowledge is not only uh, for knowledge, but knowledge and, uh, must be for people, must be uh, beneficial for, for uh, community, for other uh, other being and also and and others yep these are six drivers of change in workplaces brought by industrial revolution for example as time longevity people are living longer yeah this is uh, the result of the technology the, ra the, the race of smart machine and system technology can augment and extend our own capabilities. Computational works and so globally connected worlds, diversity and adaptability is at the center of operation. We can understand that uh, now many diversities, not only about uh, uh, people, but also many things. And also we can create uh, some way how to modify how to make uh, some adaptation to make uh, the unique one can adjust each other. Yep.
these skills for industrial revolution you know i think it's quite new for for uh, old people for x generation yeah if including a uh, boom uh, uh, baby boom a generation new media literacy virtual collaboration cognitive load management social intelligence computational thinking transdisciplinary design mindset cognitive load management and sense making that's a novel and adaptive thinking is very important and how to create a new thing yeah and then a very important for us not only new but also beneficial uh, is beneficial for 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 us uh, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry prof the uh, time, the time. Yeah, yeah, I think we, we still have a uh, few slides. Yeah. Okay. Now, yeah, next, yep. I, I, we can uh, mix faster. Okay. The technology, teaching, and also, uh, okay, okay, that's five eyes learning in. Education and education like this by being innovating. Yes, innovating is very important for this uh, era. Yep. Now, this uh, focus is uh, these four pillars of higher education: teaching, research, services, and collaboration. Okay. Next. Related to the teaching, variable assisted. Embrace cultivating innovative talent, then less blended learning. This is very now we can have information from UI, University of Indonesia, yeah, and also other universities. Uh, blended learning is very important now, not only daring, yeah, but uh, and luring, but we can we can uh, we can combine the both. Uh, research, open innovation is very important. Innovation is a uh, main uh, aspect in the uh, in the recent era. Yes, the shortened innovation cycle. Yep. Also, it is very important for service university as a platform, education as a service, uh, focus on services, internal selling a program. Uh, we have to open uh, how to make uh, collaboration openly in the international level. Okay, the last one. Collaboration, credit transfer, join a degree, dual degree, and so faculty member mobility and student mobility. Yep. Okay, this is uh, the last one. <coughs> At first of the 21st century, what changed so radically? Yeah, uh, you know that uh, we 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 have a new uh, term, new normal life. It means that we have uh, changed. Uh, we have to shift from uh, one uh, one principle to another principle with a different, with radically radically different. Yeah. The lifestyle of people is far different from it was. Yeah. This is, I think, after pandemic, we have quite different from uh, uh, what we did uh, before before pandemic. To face the condition, it is absolutely needed a new education system. So that's why it is time for uh, Minister of Education start creating a new rule, a new law on education with a new perspective, new, uh, what we call, new view, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. new point of view, new, uh, what we do, philosophy, whatever we can, we can create after a pandemic over. Yep, the higher education has challenges is responding a new life. To deal with the challenges, we should establish the character education is very important for us. The education for sustainable development and the educational technology uh, like ICT for education. 
Finally, the higher education system should empower university to produce creative and innovative works, especially in the pandemic era or the post-pandemic era. So that's why it is our time to start thinking about the future, what are our programs in a short uh, term plan and middle uh, middle term plan and also a long term plan. I think it's very important. Every institution should be uh, realized uh, about, about uh, this work, uh, this job. Every person, every uh, leader should uh, uh, think about, about the future with a new uh, perspective, with a new uh, theory, with new uh, way, new strategy, how to deal with our uh, complex, uh, more complex problems in the recent time. I think uh, enough, Mas Salim uh, Sabaya. Yes. Next, please. Thank you for. Uh, okay, thank, thank you very much, Professor Dr. Rahmat uh, for giving us such informative and interesting presentations about the challenges to higher education in the 21st century. I have many uh, things that uh, explain about the what need for a new education, what is the what is the opportunity, the challenges and the solution for the higher education in the 21st century. Okay now uh, we can continue our webinar with the last speaker today. This is uh, Dr. Ahmad Salim Pedi. He is the lecturer and researcher from Universitas Almata. Now allow me to welcome the speaker, Dr. Ahmad Salim Pedi, to deliver his presentation about the challenges of educational system in the post-COVID era. Dr. Ahmad Salim Pedi, now time is yours, please. Okay, thank you very much. Can you hear my speech? Yes, sir, very clearly. Yes, sir. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much to Mr. Silmane who gave me a chance to deliver my speech today. And honorable to Professor Dr. Ham Hadi, MS, SCD, SPK, Key, as a rector Almata University, Jakarta, Indonesia. Honorable to also to uh, Mrs. Ida Rufeda Ali, who is a chairman of Foundation Almata. And I very respect this to all the keynote speaker here, uh, to Professor Dr. Ramad Wahab, who is as a former of rector of Jakarta State University. And also, I very respect it to uh, Prof. Juhairi as a lecturer from University of North Carolina, USA, America. And also, uh, I also represent it to all participants today who can join it in the online international seminar today. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank to God who give us his blessing and blessing so we can attend in this uh, 10 or in this seminar today. Before delivering deliver IMS piece, uh, actually I would like to express my deep feeling uh, to you all, especially to Professor Rabah Wahab and to Prof. Juhairi. Actually, now I'm very excited or very happy because now I can, as a uh, keynote speaker with you all, uh, as we know, uh, they are is very, very famous uh, person in uh, educational background, maybe not only in Indonesia uh, level, but on in uh, international level. And also I need good information to Professor Mohab. Uh, I graduate from uh, State or uh, uh, Yogyakarta State University, uh, mainly in master degree. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, my title today is Chilling of Educational System During a Pandemic in Indonesia. And I may be I just uh, to complete it, that uh, explanation that have been shared by the uh, experts, uh, both experts, Professor Wahab and Professor Ajuhari uh, previously.
Okay. The impact of coronavirus. As we know, that's until now, we have known that a coronavirus uh, has been spread in all countries uh, in the world. Not only in Indonesia, but also in the other countries, uh, almost in the world. So maybe WHO declared that the virus corona is become a global pandemic. It means that it is uh, many countries, including Indonesia, facing that problem. It is uh, because is the coronavirus is uh, become as a pandemic a global or global pandemic, and coronavirus has been uh, influenced uh, on many aspects of life of human life. For example, in economic, social, culture, and also in educational sector. Uh, discuss about the coronavirus and economic. Actually, we know we. Uh, almost almost personal that the coronavirus is uh, effective to economic aspect by a fatal lockdown and maybe delay in many activities make many factory is very uh, difficult to run this business so maybe uh, they was cut their worker it's it's a uh, words or cause the people lost their job and it is uh, maybe uh, causes or impact to negative impact low income and family and so in uh, social social dimension we can see that increase unemployment criminal and social tension or competition in society because jobless because uh, usually uh, adapt to many many the a criminal and social tension in and society and a culture we as we know that forcing and counseling and suspicion of some society because culture even it is uh, make many the condition is unstable uh, very simple in counseling musical cancer maybe a decrease of visiting tourists and uh, close many tourist places it is uh, become the condition unstable in the culture is a dimension so the neck in the uh, neck slide an educational sector or educational dimension we can uh, we as know we all know that uh, school and university will be closed uh, actually the school and university be closed it this means that this activity is done as a reward to prevent the spread of uh, cause of covid 19 transmission Actually. And then uh, learning activities by daring on online, standardized site testing by delay, teacher and start work from home, students stay at home, more need or parents care. Maybe I would like to uh, more discussion about that because it is in my uh, dimension or my background. Uh, and we know that learning activities by online daring, it is, no, maybe in Indonesia. It is a disparities between urban and rural area in Indonesia uh, make the problem because uh, between uh, urban and uh, rural area in Indonesia. In urban area, we know that uh, with educate equipment and more facilities. So it's uh, no uh, maybe one child uh, to uh, one laptop on table. It is the condition in uh, uh, in urban area. But on the other hand, in the remote area, region on area, as we know, maybe the student and parent force many challenges because of lack of internet access or data or nothing or having a smartphone. The situation is complicated if the family has only one smartphone, but more than one child learning remotely. Uh, how about the student? Uh, in urban area and in, in rural area, we can know that students with above uh, average performance in class uh, likely to have a supportive home, a supportive home environment. Their well-educated parents actively participate in guiding their learning from home, as well as uh, can communicate with other teacher regularly. Uh, children, on the other hand, 
children with poor educated parents uh, and who usually who live in rural area tend to spend their time playing than rather than studying. This is the problem maybe. Their parents are usually unaware on their children's education and they, uh, they do not know how to fill that role or that role because in the normal, uh, normal condition uh, before COVID-19 maybe, uh, the parents usually uh, give the children usually go to school and the, the role of the uh, parent changed by the uh, teacher in, the, in their uh, school. And now, the uh, children or the uh, child usually stay at home. Of course, the role of the teacher change or altered by the parent. It is but a problem. No, uh, many parents do not feel to this role because maybe in the lack of the competence or the condition, uh, there much work in to fulfill their job. Maybe like that. It's confirmed that uh, the children from lower social economic background may suffer uh, professionally greater because of the school close. And then maybe <clears throat> in next step or in next uh, slide, uh, we can know that the student behavior is changing. As we know that coronavirus pandemic has surprised adoption of distant learning at all education level. The impact of learning by online media is changing a student behavior. It's running on those mass activity such as in demotion skill, attitudes, virtue character, and active dimension. <clears throat> so, like uh, in the uh, the effect of coronavirus in educational sector, it is bringing the virtual century, as we uh, like said, uh, Professor Wahab. That is, uh, it is the changing on the from the real um, era to the virtual era, or we can say it in the uh, real century to the virtual century. It is info, uh, enforcing students shift to virtual activity for anything. Uh, online journal, online book, virtual library, virtual laboratorium, using many features of Medsource, such a group video program that allow teacher and student to meet and uh, conduct classes over the internet. Unfortunately, less demonstrating feature lack like of rule model, difficulty of internalization character, and control student activity. Uh, it is maybe uh, the about the problem of the uh, character or the fear to of character. Like maybe uh, that is like saying from uh, Prophet Wahab. There's, I think the teacher or maybe student know of facing the problem to internalize the character value. Like maybe the polite, respect, independently, empathy uh, value. It is very difficult to impl implement that or to internalize now because, uh, because of all the student activity uh, by online, by daring. So maybe that felt, uh, why, why that is, is the, because the problem, because the values have to use or set it by observation activities. Uh, it is said, it is uh, mean that uh, all the character uh, must be internalized, internalized or has to be done by daily activities. So it is, uh, the problem, the moral or the character uh, fails to how to internalize it in uh, daily activity. Uh, meanwhile, the online uh, learning activity. And then maybe uh, slides. Uh, the shifting good attitude. Unfortunately, not all students have some condition. Mainly in Indonesia, it is maybe uh, same that I uh, explained in uh, before or previously, maybe. And then maybe, okay, it is maybe the uh, same that I uh, said before, that is the um, rural area uh, who is usually uh, un, uh, poor family and then uh, in remote area, <coughs> uh, lack uh, the problem or lack digital facilities, difficulty communicates because uh, the uh, way uh, they not have the good facilities 
uh, for example maybe the um, lack of data lack of uh, uh, Wi-Fi lack of internet uh, network and lack of maybe in uh, electricity maybe okay and then maybe the last one I will be said about the uh, community, uh, community responding to social change. Uh, based on the theory of respond, that's uh, respond people to the reality of the community, it can be classified into three uh, aspects. The first is reusing, the second adaptation, and then the last one is uh, modification. What is uh, refusing? Refusing uh, in that contact, uh, I think the re resist or reviews the rule of the social and physical distancing uh, that implemented on close the uh, mass or workplace, refuse uh, using or wear a mask, refuse to uh, wash hand. It is happened until now, it's happened maybe in the community. Uh, actually or mainly especially in, in the remote area because they very uh, very very confident that the virus or COVID-19 not uh, suffer from them maybe no uh, the other or next step uh, adaptation how the uh, community or society respond to the reality of uh, COVID-19 uh, pandemic adaptation in this context is the same thing the role of physical distancing as maintain this thing mm, maybe use or wear mask usually wash hand and take responsibility for their own health and that is to us on around them it's maybe uh, more or better than in the uh, first level and then in the last level or in the uh, third level is modification. What is modification in this context? Modification is alteration or changing, usually to make something work better, uh, improving some activities into different from usually, mm, maybe uh, uh, improving some activities into different usually, for example, wear masks with many accessories. It is more beauty than that usually uh, must maybe and using uncrowded hotel to walk it is maybe a modification uh, that's in uh, something work uh, uh, usually to make something to differ different than uh, the condition is uh, stable um, based on my research that i con conduct in remote area maybe in educational or in a remote area, uh, I find I find uh, many uh, innovative innovative activity that do or that done or conduct by um, teacher in the rural, rural area. Uh, I can find or I can explain now that's like the activity like a home visiting. Yeah, uh, the teacher in the remote area. Uh, to do the facing the lack of uh, facilities of internet for for example uh, they usually uh, have the program a uh, home visiting the teacher go to uh, their uh, student home to, to usually the help them to uh, do uh, their assignment maybe or to help the problem of the student and then maybe uh, submit assignment to school. Uh, it is maybe a regular or usually a theory. Uh, parent or student can go to a school, but by uh, restricted uh, schedule, maybe. Uh, how uh, how uh, they must go to school because high must submit uh, the assignment he uh, that he give uh, their to their uh, teacher, and then as we know that is. Face-to-face uh, -face learning activity. Mm, it is uh, in remote area uh, reopen again. Uh, they use face-to-face um, uh, -to -face learning activity, but of course by restriction number of student or go to school artillery. And uh, teacher visit their student and usually only hand and only uh, only hand out a semen.
Okay. The last one is thank you. Maybe uh, it is uh, that I just uh, delivering to you all. Maybe uh, many mistake to me. Uh, I'm very sorry to you, and forgive all mistakes to you. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullah wabarakatuh. Yeah. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmad Salim, MPD, for giving us such informative and interesting presentation about the uh, challenges of the educational system in the post-COVID era. We can get many uh, points such as reversing or rejecting adoption and modification. Okay, uh, ladies and gentlemen, now we come to the question and answer session. Well, I have uh, I have already had three questions here from the brother. Maybe I won't. I will read the first. The first one is coming from Nur Ajeng from Math Education. Ask about is the discussion for Mr. Juhari PhD. My question for Mr. Juhari PhD. Thank you for your time. It's very amazing presentation. Uh, from Mr. Jehari because coronavirus is one of the challenges in current education. And my question is how the education system could be prepared if pandemic situation come in next year. And the second is how is the management of education in the US today in the face of the post-pandemic era? This is from the uh, Nur Ajeng from Met Education. And the second one is the question from from Eki Ayuning Puspita. The question is to Professor Dr. Rahmat Wahab. Explain in the 4.0 era, it was focused on utilizing the robot and the CN technology to replace human job. Automatically, many people will lose their job and it will have an impact on the country's income and economy. This impact will be felt by people with limited expertise and classified in low economic communities. How to, how to handle it, Prof? This is from Eki Ayuning Puspita, the question from to Professor Dr. Rahmat. And the last one is from Muhammad Sajadia Zaki. Uh, the question to Dr. Rahmat Salim. The question is, the online learning during the pandemic era has created many phenomena. One of them is the decrease of the value of moral, moral value from the student. The question is, is the phenomena will be will give will give the impact on the quality of education or not? This is the question from each speaker. So for the speaker, are we ready to answer them? Yes, let me clarify. Maybe you want me to answer first. Okay. Uh, with the first okay. Question. Yes. yes. Sorry, yes. my voice is maybe my voice is a little bit nasally. It's uh, it's spring season in Princeton, which means there's so much pollen okay. and it's allergy season. But anyway, I'll try to okay, be sir. as clear as possible. So okay, I think sir. the question, the first question is, what is the impact of COVID? pandemic on the education because there are two two uh two parts of the question maybe you could you could uh, repeat the first one the first one is uh, from let's uh, the first one is uh, how education system could be prepared in the pandemic situation come in the next year and the second next is, year okay yes next, next year, year not next this year. year okay very good now i i think a, a few things first of all it will have to depend on how the pandemic develops. And the best case scenario is, let, let me tell you first about the, the, the vaccine. We will have to have vaccine. Now I'm a little bit nervous in Indonesia because Sinovac is the only vaccine that we have. Uh, uh, Nusantara, forget about it. That's what I can tell. It's not a vaccine. It is still, it's even failed during the development. And Merah Puti, uh, I heard from uh, Professor uh, Amin Subandrio from Aikman, University, uh, Aikman uh, Institute, it may be ready only next year. Now, having said that, let, let's be optimistic. 
if the current trend continues, in other words, the number of daily cases decrease all the time, and then we have the current rate of vaccination in Indonesia, which is not too bad, and people continue masking, distancing, we may be better next year. Now, having, so, so my point is, we will have how we can prepare ourselves. Number one is now we know the situation because of isolation. So prepare ourselves for the worst case scenario. If the situation worsen, then we will have to be ready again for all time remote education. In other words, there will be no in-person classes, but we will have to be remote which means from the technological perspective, we will have to help all the students to have the capability, the tool to do that type of education. But that is the easiest part from the technical perspective. Now, the second one is from the psychological perspective. Again, I'm not an education uh, expert. Uh, I don't claim uh, to be one, but what I observe is that everybody is depressed. In other words, psychological burden for students, for teachers, for other staff members at school is terrible. So we will have to be ready to provide support for that psychological issues as well. Now in the US, there's a big increase in the depression rate uh, uh, in, in, this, in this situation with the implication of many other health issues. So psychological and other health issues will have to be handled. We need to prepare ourselves. Now the third one is equally important and Dr. Ahmad Salim and also Professor Ahmad Wahab mentioned about the financial economic impact. People will lose jobs. So we will have to be ready to deal with that as well. Now I and personally right now have tried to help Indonesian students who cannot pay tuition because it will be bigger. And I know other universities, I, I talk like this almost every night these days, especially in the Ramadan, mainly to discuss COVID, but also epidemiology and vaccine. And I talk to educators, uh, that is the problem. And here is also my experience in the, U in the US and in Europe, it is the same. So what they're preparing are those three, thing those three things. Number one is from the technological perspective, they are radio because uh, we, have to, we have to see that in, you know, the country is much more developed. So everybody has everything. You know, in my family, we have maybe 10 laptop and, and, and others. So we need to prepare for that. And that's the problem. It, it is less problem in the US and in, in Europe, but in Indonesia may be a big problem. Now, from the psychological burden and also other disease uh, uh, burden, uh, uh, I don't know the system in Indonesia, but I think you have one universal healthcare, which is good. But over here, we deliberately try to prepare that. Now in my office, for example, I ask people because my office, me and my people, we have been working remotely for starting in March 2020. Now, it's the same thing with school. You know, many schools have been working from home for a long time. There's psychological burden. Try to ease up that by, it depends on the cultural uh, uh, perspective. So th those are the three things that I think we need to really be prepared for. You know, the tool, technology, uh, social burden and other other uh, uh, other disease related to 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 uh, psychological diseases and the number three is from the financial problem now i don't worry we don't have to worry about the curriculum and everything i think we could continue modify a little bit but those are the three things that we need to be prepared for that is next year right and what is the second question the second question is uh, how is the management of education in the us today to the face of the pandemic era in the us uh, today to face of the post pandemic era the okay. management of education in here in the usa right yes okay now in the united states in general 
in 2000, everybody is remote. The whole 2000, uh, remote. Uh, um, now, how do they manage that? So, so that's when I mentioned in my slide that the management of educational system is not only the responsibility of the educational, we don't have the Ministry of Education over here, but it is, in the end, will have to be dealt with, managed by everybody. Now, keep in mind, in, in the US, we don't have universal, like country, federal management. It is based on state. It is based on different state. And the state itself will also depend on the municipality. So, so in Indonesia, it's really based on the Kabupaten. Now, within the Kabupaten, within the municipality, the school people will work with the epidemiologists. So people like me are very important because they, man, they monitor uh, the cases on a daily basis. So the school people, the school administration will work with the local epidemiologists, will work with the government, and will work with other businesses to make a decision. But in general, the approach is like that. They always see first what the trends of the cases every day and they they adapt and here's the interesting part when they decide okay the cases are better right now so they will offer to parents and students you choose you could come in person classes or you could stay home remotely but if you go to school here are the rules the rules six feet or two meters you cannot bring food to school and you cannot eat at school uh, and people pick up if you have parents you, uh, uh, you have to be careful and even when you go to restroom to, to to the toilet you will have to have permission that that is an example of how complicated it is and before the school open they will have to have certification from the health department that they are safe. So there is a certification program. In other words, if Almata want to open, then the, I don't know, Department of Health of Yogyakarta or somewhere, they will have to certify that, okay, everything is ready. So that's how it is managed, but everything is fluid. Fluid, what I mean by that is a dynamic system. So if, if the data change, then they will have to change the management. That's what I said, adapt. You have to adapt. And another, let me close this statement by the last one is, we need to have resilience. Tahan banting, we need to have resilience. Because whatever we do, right? Again, psychologically, people are bored and people are frustrated. So whatever management system you, 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 you apply, you will have to re really work very closely with different, different uh, uh, stakeholders. But again, we are talking about local. So in Indonesia, I, I don't think it's wise for us to apply the system in Alma Ata and somewhere in, in, in Bogor, for example. It's a totally different ballgame. Uh, but anyway, I hope that answers your questions. Okay, thank you very much. Mr. Jahiri is has answered the question about the uh, how the education system could be prepared and but the, how is the management of education in the US? We have to focus the psychologist, technologist perspective, sociologist, and the keyword that I can get the point is together with the others, with the government, with the stakeholder, with the uh, health department and to create the resilience about the handband thing semuanya and the last we have to adapt okay thank you very much from me to mr jahiri psd and now we go to the second question for professor rahmat wahab uh, now it's time for us to answer the question please thank you very much uh mas ricky yes I have some uh, points to uh, respond to the question. <coughs> uh, 
the first one is uh, how to reconstruct uh, uh, the job you know uh, uh, last time we we have uh, some different jobs and then right now we don't need some of them and then uh, because of the situation we we need a different kind of job related to the economic uh, to the agriculture uh, to the uh, other activities, industrial, and so on and so on. So that's why uh, it is a time for uh, the experts to create or de develop a new jobs for uh, people, which is which is a very important for them to to adjust with the new job. That is, uh, uh, it is uh, it is a good way how to uh, reconstruct. A kind of job, and then the second one, it is uh, responsibility. It is uh, what we call uh, a must for the government to protect uh, the people. They uh, they they should not ignore the people who become uh, unemployed. So they have to uh, protect them by uh, what we call making a transitional uh, time for a, a new job at the next time. Uh, for, uh, especially for the what we call old worker and also uh, for a new job seeker. So that's why uh, uh, government should uh, protect them how to make uh, them become uh, un, uh, not frustrated. They can uh, still live without any job. Might be for uh, one month or for three months or for six months or for one year, for example, depend on the uh, level of uh, difficulties. The third one, uh, the government uh, might be the heads of uh, governor or maybe the heads of a municipal uh, where, uh, can stop uh, people doing urbanization. Yeah. You know that uh, many people uh, urbanize to the city then they left uh, some jobs in, in, in the village. So that's why they have to stop in, in the village and also, uh, like Pak Chamat or Pak Lurah or whatever, Pak Bupati, can try to mix uh, uh, some resources in, in their uh, region can become more productive rather than before. And then uh, number four, I think uh, it is time for, for every uh, people can create a new business in 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 in, in their uh, village area. Right now, you know that's uh, uh, last time when we uh, spend our weekend, yeah, we go to the city, trying to get a rest, new restaurants, uh, good restaurant, for example. But now, quite many. Uh, like cafe uh, in spread in in the villages you know with a good with a traditional performance it's very quite interesting for for uh, uh, people who uh, are as a visitors at the city not spending at at the city restaurant but uh, they they go to some cafe spread in in the villages and the on the what we call the foods is quite good yeah, right? because uh, traditional food and also with cheap uh, price is quite quite interesting for for the for new business and also uh, every village can open what we call uh, village store village store yeah village store uh, can be linked to the uh, what the legal, uh, uh, what they call their uh, potential. Maybe you can 
be linked to the what we call <coughs> uh, fruits, yeah, fruit, fruits, garden, yeah, or whatever. And then it's also they can uh, create uh, what we call um, uh, face, facing uh, facing activities, whatever. And they, they can create other uh, business center uh, related to the local uh, wisdom. I think uh, right now we can also uh, encourage a faculty or department of uh, agriculture develop what we call uh, agriculture technology and they can uh, uh, support uh, village people to to make up their, their village become uh, more interesting uh, than, than before. There's so many kinds of uh, ways, many kinds of ways we can create for a new job. I think it's uh, naturally, adalah fitroh, yeah? Fitroh, it is naturally for, for people can do anything to uh, compensate our uh, weaknesses. Yeah, we, we, I think it is not time for, for us uh, to stop working. But if we do just small uh, things, we can uh, create uh, anything as a starting point, that is a gradually, we can uh, develop uh, program, a uh, develop uh, uh, creation, and anything else can be a center of uh, what we call uh, economics, economics uh, center for uh, village people. So uh, last time, and people just only go to the city, but now we, we can we can check in different uh, area, different regions. They can develop uh, any activities like in in uh, the central Java, yeah. In central Java, um, uh, the gov governor can create many uh, activities like uh, which 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 cities as a center of party, which cities. Uh, a center of handcraft, which it is uh, a center of uh, what the fruit, whatever. The, the governor and also Bupati can uh, facilitate the people can develop uh, their uh, strength uh, related to uh, their, their asset or the, the, the region or the area. Uh, I think it is uh, yes. what, what I can say to share uh, from Mbak Ajeng or whatever. Thank, Thank you very much, Prof. Uh, I get some points for the question. Uh, the first we can, uh, it's time to create, develop and reconstruct a new job and every people create a new business and for the government, protect the people, new job seeker. So I think it is, uh, has answered the question. And from the next question, we'll call the uh, Dr. Ahmad Salim to answer the question. Are you ready, bro? Sir? Okay. Okay. Okay, Dr. Ahmad Salim, it's time for yours. Okay, I will try to ask one of the questions. Uh, I think, no, uh, not only teacher have or facing the problem, deal with the coronavirus uh, pandemic. I think all person, uh, many person in the world uh, facing this problem. Like that's a saying from uh, Prof. Zuhairi and Prof. Uh, previously. <coughs> that's, uh, I say uh, previously, that's the problem in, in how to internalize the character value, uh, how to internalize the polite value, respect, independently empathy i think it is the problem uh, not but i can uh, say it is big problem from the educational dimension uh, because as we know that's uh, as we uh, see into the bloom theory uh, it be it be we see that the uh, the skill of uh, persons it must be Classified into three uh, dimensions: cognitive, 
effective and a psychomotoric dimension or perspective. And character education, I think, is uh, at the uh, second level. It is in effective dimension, as we know that is. Now, effective, uh, effective dimension, it is must be uh, conducted or must be done in daily activity. It's be uh, implemented to the teacher, to the student, all in the stakeholder who is uh, in that the surrounding in the school. I think like that. So if that's maybe uh, no, because all the activity, learning, teaching activity uh, through by online uh, dimension on online by online tool, it is maybe a problem because a teacher very difficult to implement it as a rural model. So uh, student, their student cannot see the role model how be implemented to their teacher it is the problem and then as we know uh, no one currently until now until now i think no one can predict uh, when the vi coronavirus can the end the end in the world in, including in indonesia country so maybe because we usually believe uh, to the human being Human beings usually have skill to usually adapt or adjust in the reality condition, I think. So, uh, teacher and maybe by uh, help to other, uh, other expert or other uh, educational sector can usually have innovative or have a good idea to how to adjust this condition. Like I said, like uh, previously, maybe it is one of the good idea. For example, uh, they usually go to to the their home, the uh, uh, student home. I think that is a good idea. Of course, usually by keep the uh, height protocol. Uh, usually use mask, uh, keep the physical distancing and other. And then maybe uh, in other hand, we we usually uh, hopefully that the teacher must usually upgrade their um, competence or their skill how to using the um, a modern uh, modern technology, uh, how usually to adapt, how usually using to the um, current uh, activity educational. I think like that. So uh, the more important too. It is in at the uh, student aspect or student level. We usually a uh, hope on. We usually need to usually uh, 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 need together, need together to do or look at to have uh, with the parent. We usually um, teacher have to usually um, do together with the, their parent how to uh, do the goods or the suitable to their student or to their uh, to their children uh, because uh, the conditions in uh, one area to another area is different maybe uh, like i say uh, previously uh, urban area and in rural area is very different so the teacher in uh, that area must usually adjust or usually uh, adapt to their condition i think like that so in the last one is uh, i think we usually must uh, usually give more information or give more knowledge to uh, our student that this this uh, virus corona is have uh, effective to many dimension, not only in education, but also in uh, economic sector. Uh, we usually have a good understanding to uh, our student and uh, they usually to adapt, not only usually using modern digital technology, using to uh, playing game maybe, <laughs> but we usually uh, using it to uh, better or to more um, using uh, in uh, educational dimension. 
because as we know in the survey uh, is used or survey see to us that uh, now and currently in uh, pandemic era uh, many students using a smartphone using a digital uh, methods it is more to applying game <laughs> it is many problem i think okay uh, okay so we can uh, we can usually uh, uh, explain to their uh, to our student to make it uh, be more useful to okay. uh, our uh, okay. edu educational sector or educational beacon i think like that okay thanks dr ahmad salim uh, has answered the question and maybe i get the point that the teacher must be more innovative create a good idea a good uh, innovative teaching and learning and maybe give more information about the COVID to the students and uh, to make the technology be more useful okay thanks for all participants but maybe we, we can have uh, maybe we'll choose one of the question maybe we have a, uh, just a limited time it's one question the last question i get from galih albara from kaset sart university thailand this question is to professor dr rahmat wahab it's very interesting prof i agree with you that the moral competence moral competency is a very important skill in 21st century skill I would like to ask about how we teach or promote students moral values during the COVID-19 situation. Okay, Prof. Rahmat Ohab, maybe uh, it's time for you to answer the question, Prof. Okay. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Siapa tadi? Galih Albara, Prof, from University of Kasetsar, University Thailand. Oh, thank you. Gali. 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 Uh, 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 it's moral competence. I, I, I do respect, I do appreciate for your support about uh, moral competence. It's, it is a very, very important for us, especially as uh, Indonesian, as a religious person. Uh, how to uh, teach, how to educate, how to uh, analyze um, moral competence. You know, that's in the pandemic era it is a good time for a parents yeah for parents can handle uh, by themselves yeah? as the first teacher as the first educator the main educator for the children and they have uh, more times for uh, guiding and for facilitating and for uh, supporting uh, 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 their kids to uh, learn about uh, some some materials related to the religions uh, to the moral uh, or religious uh, material and also uh, moral uh, materials uh, materials are uh, talking about moral and so on and so on and not only uh, uh, learning about about uh, religious material, but also how to implement naturally in 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 the uh, home, you know, and uh, the parents can educate uh, their kids uh, led to the moral uh, competence, not only by a direct uh, teaching, a direct educating, but also can do by indirect way. Uh, you know, like uh, uh, how about uh, what we call uh, enjoying uh, breakfast, enjoying uh, lunch, and enjoying uh, dinner together and, uh, between uh, parents and also uh, kids, you know, and they, they can share uh, about uh, how to uh, enjoy how to uh, eat uh, well eh? uh, or uh, better or good or whatever and also uh, drinking uh, the way how to drink and so and many ways many uh, uh, aspect can be teach and educate for to our kids because we have uh, quite uh, enough times with our kids in at home and also we can control 
what activities uh, they can do in at, at home, uh, including uh, the, the 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 kids uh, to how to watch a television uh, uh, agenda, yeah, the schedule. Uh, the the uh, the parents can uh, help them to select with uh, the most appropriate for for the kids because the parents uh, at home not only uh, their mom and but also their dad as far as they can work from home because okay. now there are uh, alternative for their their parents to to do can be uh, working at off at the office and also yeah. at the home mm -hmm. and during at, in the home they can uh, accompany their uh, kids uh, doing anything so informally or informally or non formally uh, activities okay. i think uh, i think uh, this is uh, very important for for parents and also for kids and also kids can have a direct uh, influence from from their uh, uh, parents i think it is it is uh, what we can sh share with with uh, uh, yep. mas yang dari thailand tadi Kelly, Prof. Okay. Uh, thank you very much from to me to Professor Dr. Rahmat Wahab. I get the point. The key word is the role of the parents. Parents' role is the key to teach or to promote the student moral values during the COVID-19 era. Now, uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, I think uh we are fina finally come to the end of this seminar before i close the seminar i will like to take the conclusion from what the speaker has presented uh, so i said uh, thank you very much for all the speaker uh, mr jahari phd professor dr rahmat wahab and dr rahmat Salim mpd i will uh, would like to take the conclusion at uh, the first uh, any uh principle especially for the school or higher education operation in the during the pandemic era or post-covid at the first is we have to see the trend by scientific data we have to discuss with the other stakeholder with the parents teacher uh, health department or maybe any government maybe and we have to decide what action we have to do and of course, the mitigation measure, physical distancing, and the other protocol kesehatan, uh, and uh, start slow, start slowly to create the school operation because uh, it's easy to manage. And the last, we have to adapt about the new, uh, new habit in the post-COVID era. Okay, I think enough for today. I would like to thank the speaker for the informative an interesting presentation and all the participants for the very active participant with the many questions and finally give the applause for the speaker and for all of you thanks okay uh, from before we i close the new let's we take the camera maybe photo take a photo yes uh, i said that is the information by the brother Please, all the speaker, uh, turn on the video, and all the participants, turn on the video. Maybe our operator will take a photo. At... Okay. Okay, let's. Maybe I will count that. One, two, keep smile okay thanks enough i think uh, thanks for the brother and thanks for all the participants and all the speaker i'm so sorry if i have many mistakes to in this webinar okay to close this event this activity let's we let's pray together and from the for muslim let's say alhamdulillah alhamdulillah alamin uh, finally, so sorry, bila terpengaruh, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Mr. Jihari, Prof. Rahmat, and Prof.
Ahmad Salim. Terima kasih Pak Ahmad Wahab, Pak Ahmad Salam. Oke, terima kasih. Salam dari anak saya katanya uh, sering dengan Pak Abe. Oh, Pak yeah. Arif Budimantan. Oke, yeah, Pak. Pak Arif Budimantan. Mm, ya, yes. terima kasih ya Prof. Ahmad. Ya, Pak Prof. Juheri ya, Prof. Juheri Mutar. Iya, yeah, Prof. Juheri. Katanya yeah. sering, sering dialog sama Pak Arif Budimantan. Guys. Oh iya, sering-sering juga. Ya, Tadi nah, juga okay. ada 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 salam dari Profesor A. Asep Saifuddin. Oh iya, yes. <laughs> Rektor, uh, sekarang yeah. Rektor, uh, Rektor yeah. Al-Azhar. Uh, Pak Rahman Wahab, yeah. teman saya katanya. Assalamualaikum. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Salam. Semua orang, Pak. Semua orang. Salim juga. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Yeah. Terima kasih, Pak Rahman Salim. Terima kasih, Pak Rahman. Terima kasih, Pak Rahman. Terima kasih, Pak Rahman. Terima kasih, Pak Rahman. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Terima kasih, Pak Salim. Terima kasih. Iya, Prof. Wahab. Terima kasih sekali. Pak Prof, ini Pak Rektornya mana? Enggak kelihatan. Ya, sudah ini. Sebenarnya ada Tadi kegiatan sudah. lain, Prof. Ada. Salam, salam, Mas Riki ya. Oke, ya, Prof. Siap, Prof. Ya. Terima kasih. Nuan, ya, Prof. Juga, Bu Anissa, Bu Yusinta, terus apa lagi? Oke, ya, Prof. Mas Sopo. Ingat semua, Prof. Ada semua, Prof. Ada. Ini semuanya di ruangan, Prof. Oh, iya. Oke, ya, Prof. Salam. Itu Mbak Yusinta itu ada itu. Ada, Prof. Mbak Bu Yusinta. Terima kasih. Bani saya. Bani saya. Terima kasih ya. Oke, Bro. Iya. Ya, ya.